Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hi there. Welcome to this, the 75th episode of A Couple Takes on MS. Hi, this is Dan Digman. And hi, it's me, Jennifer Digman. 75 episodes, wow, that's... That's that's a milestone. That that is a milestone. Why is it always 5 and 25, Mark? I, I... That's a really good question. It's a great question. But I'm I'm happy that we're at episode 75. We are at episode 75, and this A Couple Takes on MS... Um, thereby then meaning we both have multiple sclerosis. I have relapsing remitting MS, and I've had it for about 20 years. And my MS is secondary progressive, and I've been living with multiple sclerosis for 22 years. And as we've talked about before, I'm in a wheelchair. I use a wheelchair. I never know the correct way to say it. I'm in a wheelchair, use a wheelchair. But needless to say, I don't walk on my own, and I haven't been able to walk for 17 years. So I am proof positive that life in a wheelchair can still be good. And we've been married then for uh, almost four, almost 14 no, years. Almost 14 and, years. And with this, with the show, we talk about uh, different things in life and take it from... You know, a couple, you know, the perspectives of a man and a woman living with multiple sclerosis and caregiving and whatnot. And what we're talking about today is how do you handle disappointments? We talk about disappointments in life and then talk about, we'll, we'll share some tips and ways that you can overcome your disappointments in life and in just in things, obviously, with the disease that is multiple sclerosis. And I don't think that we're aiming to, like, heal or cure we're disappointments not, we're not or anything like anything, that. No. We just, Dan and I, we've been taking this disease, as we said, 20 years plus, that we know how to manage. I would think that's fair to say we manage disappointments pretty well. Because I mean, God knows MS has... It's fair share as, of disappointments as, that it causes absolutely. in your life. I mean, just from the moment that you find out that you're going to be living with a chronic illness, I don't know about you, Dan, but my picture of what my future was going to be was quickly shaken, and just, like, that was a huge... I would say that was my first big disappointment was just holy, I'm not going to be like everyone else, you know. Maybe I'm going to be like a million other Americans, as the the numbers report now, living with multiple sclerosis. But back in 1997, I just thought I was just going to be living a healthy future and wasn't going to have to deal with the reality of chronic illness. Never did I think that I would have to deal with it at... 27 years old that you know dealing with the realities that we have to deal with with multiple sclerosis you always think that's something that will come with age when I get older I mean for God's sakes you were 23 you know you had your future in front of you and just how you were saying that um, with your birthday you will have lived with multiple sclerosis half your life. And I mean, I'm, I'm pushing that. I was going to say, I'm, you're, I'm you're, you're hot on my heels. Exactly. And, and so I think this, a lot of this spurned from, and, and just point blank, we learned today, we were planning to go to Philadelphia, um, actually probably in a couple weeks. Yeah, two weeks. And we got a call today and things with that trip fell through and we no longer now are going to go to Philadelphia. And then the initial thought was, you know, it, it's disappointing. It's disappointing, and we were looking forward to it, and it would be a nice trip. 
not, you know, any long trip, but it was going to be short and sweet and just a change to get us out of Michigan for a little while. And then today we found out we're not doing that. And you think of everything that we went, that, that it started, I mean, obviously we hadn't gotten everything in order, but, you know, we booked our plane tickets. We were talking about maybe having to go clothes shopping this weekend, so we had some, some different clothes to wear. Some, some appropriate some, some summer fun fashions clothes. Yeah, yeah. or warm weather fashions. Yeah, and just talking about that and... You know, and obviously then shift things around and make sure I could get the vacation time from work. And and then boom, just like that, it's done. It's gone. And there's no trip to Philadelphia. And I mean, yeah, initial thought was disappointment. But now, 12 hours later, I'm. it's like, yeah, still bummed. But at the same time, it didn't drag me down because I started thinking about what what opportunities are here now. There was there was a little sense of relief. I don't want to speak for you. No, because we talked about. But yeah. there there was just a little sense of relief because as great and excellent as this opportunity would be, it would be exhausting. You know, if we if we take a flight like that, there's a lot of pre-trip homework that we have to do. You know, as I'm sure any anyone out there listening. You have to get the car serviced, make sure it's in good shape. Granted, we are flying, but we have a three-hour drive to the nearest airport or to the nearest airport that services the airline that we prefer. And, you know, so we had that to do, and then we had to take care of you having to get your work hours all situated and possibly and the, the, the close. Amount, you know, the amount of extra work I would have to do to make up that time Never mind the extra work that you would have to do to get us to the airport and then get us on the airplane and then get to the trip. I mean, it's the trip would be amazing and we would love to take it and we will someday. But just right now, we're like, that could be really exhausting. So Well, and, and, and just because I didn't have a ton of vacation time, and I think that's part of the thing in terms of dealing with disappointments is for that one moment, that instant, that yes, you know, we're no longer going to go to Philadelphia and we put some work into it, but just take a step back when when you want to be, when, when the feeling is to be disappointed, take a step back and look at the bigger picture and look at the things that you gain from it. Think of the, you know, and, and it is a matter of looking at the positive versus the negative. I mean, now I have, that much more vacation time built up. So when we go to Iowa for the 4th of July, I'm not scrimping and scraping and finding ways to get that vacation time built up. So it is like we're looking at the bright side. We're looking on the bright side. And that can be difficult, certainly, depending on the disappointment, you know, 12 hours after the disappointment. To be able to find a bright side, you can tell. I mean, it was a it was a big disappointment to us, but not like a big, big disappointment. Well, there wasn't. It wasn't a life or death yeah. situation, or you know. But it is looking at the pros and the cons, and just taking a step back. Give yourself a little time, and hopefully, you can you can refocus on that, on that, so that you can see. The 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 better things that can come out of that disappointment. And I think maybe that 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 potentially is comes from for me anyway, dealing with and living with multiple sclerosis for twenty years. Just shifting it's really a mind shift on how you um look at things. And you know, it's uh And I think to a certain extent maybe your values change a little that yes, to have this experience would have been great and we would have had a fun time. And But we also look at it like it may be tiring, it may, you know, wear us out. And so you have to look at who you are right now and, and what the reality of that situation, that disappointment. Maybe it is a mixed blessing. You know, you're disappointed because you aren't getting to experience I have that moment, but in the in the end, it is for the past. 
And I think that's, you know, when we talk about disappointments, we had briefly touched on the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. But at 23 years old, being told I had MS, that was that was scary and a little disappointing that my life was going to entail this disease that every day I would go to sleep and I would wake up the next day and still have it. It wasn't like a common cold and it would quickly go away. And way back in the dark ages of when I was diagnosed, social media was certainly not as prevalent as it, as it is right now. And that's one of the things that I kind of caution the newly diagnosed or people who are still learning with or getting used to living with a chronic illness. It can be somewhat disappointing if you look at your social media, your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram, and you see photos of your friends doing things that you are no longer able to do or you're no longer interested in doing. And that disappointment, I think, handling that you have to really not judge yourself against other people because you are now kind of always a you have a plus one with you. It's it's not like I'm just going to, you know, it's just me. It's me and multiple sclerosis. So if I'm not able to do what some of my friends are doing, or you know, the rea my situation is different, you have to keep that that in perspective. You know, and I think that that helps to deal with this appointment because I know that me, when I was diagnosed, I thought, oh, I'm going to have kids someday. And my my having children just it wasn't the right choice for me. Not that you can't have kids with multiple sclerosis, but it wasn't the right choice for me. And that was difficult when I was in my late 20s, early 30s, that that was not going to be a reality for me. But now I know that that, that just wasn't me. And if I compare myself to all my friends who have children, that I think adds a little bit more fuel to the disappointment fire. They're not living with multiple sclerosis. Granted, I'm not living the reality that they are, but sometimes you just shouldn't be as hard. On yourself, or am I like totally rambling on? Dan, do you get what I'm saying? I know exactly. I mean, I know exactly what you're saying. It's I mean because sometimes it is that it's it's really easy to look at things, especially with social media or when you talk with friends and you hear all these great things. I mean, it's taking a step back again and just think they're not posting. The hard times, you know, they're posting the good times. I mean, think how you post what you post on social media. I mean, you're showing the the, the good side, the highlights. I mean, yeah, people will post some of the negative stuff too. But at the same time, it's almost like you look at. It's almost like life, in general. You need to look at life the way that you do as a runner, or like a runner looks at a race. Yeah, please tell me I'm not a runner, so how is well, that? Well, but I mean, but the big thing was it's like that that's what I was like back in the day when I ran. Okay. Sure, I competed. I was competing with others, but I mean, running was very much a, an individual event, and I was looking how am I going to improve my personal best? Me, you know, I'm the only one, you know, when you talk about being an individual, when we talk about how we in the MS community are so good to look and say, oh, well, MS affects all of us differently. Right. Why do we limit our scope to multi people with multiple sclerosis? That we don't, com you know, we say, oh, snowflake disease, so you don't compare yourself to other people living with MS because you know it's very much an individual thing. So why are we... Why do we not apply that same mentality to our our every friend, all of our friends, the rest of the world? That it's just like, this is me. This is my individual battle with this disease. How am I doing with it? How am I doing me internally? And and how compared to what I was yesterday, I That's was a yesterday. Good point. I don't care what you were. No, no, I do care about you. Well, but I thank mean, in you. Terms I appreciate that. I care about you too. Self assessment. 
Why do I care what you did yesterday or how you felt yesterday, what you're accomplishing, because you're not me. So and, that's, and, that's a really good point. Like, don't compare yourself to others. And really, when you're living with a chronic illness, you should do a self-assessment and compare yourself to how you were a week ago or a month ago because you want to stay on track and stay on top of your health. That's a really, that's a good point. And so instead of comparing yourself to others, maybe to to decrease the amount of disappointment, just compare yourself to yourself, keeping in mind that you are living with a chronic illness and that that, that bad disease is going to occasionally get the upper hand on you, but by comparing it on yourself, you can keep yourself ahead of the disease, hopefully. Well, and, that, and and because then you're in control of what you do, well, other than that stupid disease. But I mean, you control what you do, and so how if if you're disappointed in things, how can you make it better? And we talked about you know the disappointment, like going in when you know when you spend a whole week. I mean, we'll, we'll talk we'll talk Weight Watchers. I mean, just like you you want to. You know, work the whole week. As everyone knows, not only am I in a wheelchair, but I'm a, like a lifelong Weight Watchers kind of person because I have a like weight problem and I want to always try and like lose weight for myself, but also for my caregivers and for my husband so that the transfers are a little easier. So I try to be responsible and, and work the, the, just work, the best for my health. So then how, let me ask you this then, when we go and, I mean, we're just, now we're, it's all out on the table, but I mean, you know, we go to Weight Watchers, you can't stand on the scale by yourself. So then I, they weigh me and then then I help you stand and then they subtract my weight. And so we work all week, you know, and you're, you're, you're managing your points and everything. And then we go and when you know that you didn't have a bad week or we didn't, we, you know, those weeks where we go out to eat like three times and are just bad, bad kids. Bad, bad, bad. But so you go, you weigh, you think you have a good week, you gain two pounds. You don't know how. I mean, obviously there's some disappointment in that. There's disappointment. And just to say it again, I don't walk and I don't conventional exercise. The WW program works, and I'm not a paid spokesperson. I'm just saying from all these years that it does really work. But when I get disappointed like that, when I gain the two pounds, my first instinct is, oh, Dan, let's go get donuts on the way home. (laughs) I want to soften the blow and go to my comfort food. And I know that that's unhealthy. So with with that disappointment, I have to deal with it, and I have to think logically. And that can be dis- uh, that can be difficult, but with the disappointment, I have to take stock and not beat myself up. You know, I worked really hard that week, and maybe I gained this week, but if I stick with it, excuse me, maybe next week I will lose twice as much. So rather than sabotage myself by eating that donut to comfort the pain, I have to be like, no, I really want this. And I think that that's a really good tool or something, a way to manage disappointment is to say, in the end, yes, this is a speed bump or this is a a way that could set me off course, but I'm stronger than that. I'm going to stay on course and I have a big picture. I have a weight that I want to, to get to. I have a goal weight. And having a donut to like make the pain go away for a second is gonna hurt way more next week when I weigh and I gain another pound. Because I was thinking too, then how much more disappointed would you be in yourself if you ate that donut? I mean, it's like the 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 there's like a level of remorse. Of yeah, when, and and then it's like it's a conscious decision that you know you could have. And you're Avoided. taking, yeah, you're taking yourself off that course where you are moving forward and you are purposely taking a step back. And I think that's one of the, the risks of disappointment 
is sometimes just like comforting yourself or losing track of, yes, it's a disappointment, it's a setback, but you've got to keep moving forward. And that's, you know, with this disease, you can have, you know, if I would have stopped when, when the disease got hard, if I would have said, oh, I'm done, you know, 15 years ago when I started losing my ability to walk, I never would have met you. I never would have had this opportunity to have a, like a, a radio show. We never would have had some of the experiences we have. So that's why I think we're strong advocates for moving forward. And don't let the disappointment stop you in your path. And for me, I think that the disappointments, char- you know, obviously, obviously, initially, they're 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 upsetting, they're d- disappointing, right. and everything. But at the same time, once I get over the uh, s- sticker shock, so to speak, it's like it it energizes me, and it's like a challenge to go out and do better. How am I going to prove it? It's just like, you know, when I I lost my job. Yeah, I was going to bring that I, up, I, but... The, you know, I lost my job, you know, from from Central Michigan University. And, you know, on some levels, I, I honestly had thought that I was going to retire from there. But, you know, the job wasn't all it was cracked up to be over time. You know, I lost a job, and you're just saying, okay, what's going to happen? And, you know, obviously disappointing, but at the same time, it was like a, a clean slate to go and do and find something else. You know, seven, eight months later, I found, you know, the absolute perfect job. And, and you you wouldn't have found I that. I would not have found that. Had I, you rolled up in a ball and surrendered. Yeah, and... I didn't surrender. Yeah, it's like I didn't surrender. And I didn't settle. You know, obviously you go and you apply to jobs. You interview for jobs. And nothing just felt right, but then I found this job with Ruffalo Noel Levitz, and I thought it was, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect with it, but then when I got offered the job and I get to work remotely, it's a company based in Iowa, but I can work from my home full-time in Michigan. Whoever would have, I never would have gone and looked for this kind of a job. I never thought it would be possible. And I don't want to be hokey, but I am I am that, that I'm kind of a Pollyanna like that. That when one door closes, when there is a disappointment, I like to believe that another one will open. You know, if a door closes, maybe a window will open or another door will open. Just don't give up, you know, continue continue moving forward as I've said and maybe channel that energy when you lost your job instead of just sitting back and waiting for another job to happen you channeled your time and your energy and you searched and you found the RNL job you know and I think that's that's when you say well and, and I was going to say as long as we're putting it all on the table you know I I had a, you know, failed marriage before this, you know, and that that was, it was, that's true, you know, and that, you know, had when that marriage ended and I, had I just sat back and, and, and was disappointed and felt sorry for myself and, and, and shut myself out, I never would have met you. And that opened the door to everything despite, and we both have multiple sclerosis. I mean, and that's that's the thing. It's just like you move forward, you know, and this stuff doesn't happen by just sitting back or being disappointed. It's, you know, it's having your moment, but then moving forward. And having your your goals and your expectations and not saying, oh, because this didn't work out this time, I'm so disappointed, I think I'm going to stop. You you say yeah this this disappointment stinks and it's painful, but I can get up I can dust myself off, I can work and I can try again, and certainly if you hadn't done that we never would have met and look at all the opportunities we would have missed. And 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 that's the thing and going forward you know I say like moving forward and stuff and don't you know be disappointed but 
the big thing is is you need to open yourself up and ask for help and get help from others and, and through your friends and your support system and everything. I mean, I never would have found you had a friend not introduced us or and you know and just like rely on people right. to help you and that's i mean i feel like this that's like the one thing that i mention every week is just this community chronic illness whether you're living with it or you're a caregiver or a supportive bunch and just reach out you're not by yourself and it's it's easy to think that you're really alone and isolated, but reach out. If you feel you don't have anyone to talk to, you've got us, you know. We're voices on the radio right now, but we have email addresses, Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts. Reach out to us because no one should be dealing with this chronic illness, multiple sclerosis alone. And you can find us, our website is danandjenniferdigman.com and we're on Twitter is uh, at danjendig. Reach out to us, let us know how do you overcome disappointment and, and if you need to talk, you need to chat, I mean just let us know and um, we can Hopefully we can this. help you manage disappointment and Dan and I will continue managing because they're bound to happen, but it's the resilience in that move forward attitude. And so again, this has been a couple takes on MS, and we've been talking about, you know, how do you handle disappointments and a lot. Um, really, it's just pushing forward, you know, being disappointed, but don't don't shut yourself off. You know, weigh the pros and cons and look at the bigger picture, and um, don't compare yourself to others so much as you know, compare yourself. Like, how can you improve you, you know, looking at your success and where you are and where you want to go? And so until next time, this has been Dan and Jennifer Digman on A Couple Takes on MS. And thanks again to the Blue Draft Kid for composing the theme music to our show. And thanks to MS and Me Radio Network for having us uh, a format to chat with you. Take care. <laughs>